Hello, everyone. Everybody? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to, again, to thank everyone for coming today. We're, uh, the good news is we have a really new setup, and the bad <laughs> news is we're trying to get it to work. It's not going to um, work. For, we're getting a projector. Uh, yeah. a projector. <laughs> so, okay. We're getting a projector, and we'll use these, the whiteboard to project on. Right, so uh, Larry says we will get a projector. Um, uh, so that the program can continue. Uh, for now, uh, I wanted actually to uh, uh, do some of the pie uh, business things. But before I do that, uh, Roy, did you want to add something? What? Do the business stuff first, and then we'll see. Tag on. OK, so the first thing I wanted to do was to recognize if we have any new pie members here today. New pie members? Edwin? Welcome. Uh, so, could you both stand up? Uh, Edwin actually has come uh, uh, come to a couple of the clubhouse Saturdays, and we've had uh, great sessions back and forth. Uh, and uh, Gabe Goldberg, I think all of you know, uh, uh, is presides over um, PC user groups that we're trying to actually work more closely together with. Uh, and he has become a new uh, uh, PI member, and for that we're grateful. Um, I had big plans to um, award uh, name tags to the event. And uh, this is where we depend on Brent Malcolm, who's getting better. Uh, so uh, at a future meeting, um, we will be able to uh, provide you two new PI members with your name tags. Yeah. Anyway, thanks so much for coming today. Thank, thanks, thank you. Welcome. That's why I'm wearing my CCCUG badge from a very long time ago. This used to be the 6,000 member Windows group in the area, so I've got my nostalgic CCCUG badge. But I'm looking forward to a new ceremony and get the my <laughs> badge. Yes, Richard. Just to show you the accuracy of Apple here, we have four iPhones on, on Compass, and they all have different degrees. <laughs> they're all pointing to North, but they're all different degrees. So don't don't get lost. Yeah, don't, don't don't get lost using an Apple Compass. Oh, uh, what I <laughs> what I'd like to do now is quickly talk about the bylaw rev uh, 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 revision that we wanted the membership to vote on today. And the short story um, is that many other nonprofits have a, a range of X to Y number of directors. The PI bylaws have for many years had, have been solid at 15 directors. This is something that we have wanted more flexibility. Uh, and so the bylaw revision that the board of directors wanted to put to the membership is in the bylaw provision to instead of saying 15 members, saying per, per, 9 to 15 members. Now, uh, I, this is posted on the PI website, and I sent an announced list message a while back. Uh, I wanted to ask if anyone had questions about this bylaw revision 
or anyone who wanted to make a motion to approve it? Make a motion to approve it. <laughs> Second. Uh, Diane, did you have a question? So we have second and thirded the motion. Um, could, it, uh, could all in favor of this raise their hands? Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, thank you very much for that piece of pie business. Um, the other thing I, yes, Jay. We might solicit uh, candidates for the next round of Oh. Yeah, later in the in in the spring, we'll be uh, running the the annual Pi Board elections. So, if you would like to serve as a Pi Board member, uh, please let us know because we are very interested in bringing different people uh, into the into the Pi governance. Thanks for that, Jay. You don't have to be a map guru or an iOS guru to sit on the board. Oh, yeah. Fact, Bruce points out, Bruce points out that to serve on the board, you have to be able to ask really good questions. <laughs> yes, Diane. I would really like to say that I am still the only woman on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Diana, thanks. Yeah, the more the more different uh, voices come to the Pi board, the better the outcome. Uh, the other uh, pitch I would make is that we have the Pi board meetings quarterly, and usually they overlap with the clubhouse Saturdays. So uh, these are open to Pi, Pi members. So if you're interested in what goes on at the board meetings, hopefully we won't put anybody <laughs> off. Uh, please feel free to come. Any other questions about that? OK, uh, briefly, I also wanted to talk about the meetings coming up. Uh, and uh, in uh, uh, February, we have two Clubhouse Saturdays. Go to the Pi calendar on the website or the meetup group or the dates. We have a uh, afternoon murders that takes place on the second Thursday, uh, also at Cedar Lane. Uh, and the general meeting at the end of the month uh, will be back at George Mason uh, in this room or maybe in the other room. Um, and the uh, February meeting, we're locking down uh, who the presenter will be, is going to be about security. Uh, the March general meeting at the end of uh, March that's going to be at Cedar Lane is going to have a, the fellow who's in charge of tech for the Montgomery County uh, libraries who's going to give what I hope will be a really interesting talk of library trends using technology uh, and tools that they use in the library. So that would be the March uh, general meeting. Yeah, I, I think Bruce uh, makes the point that the libraries have really had to adjust a lot. And uh, one evidence of that is that if you compared the number of, of computer stations in the old library with the renovated or new libraries, they've dramatically increased it because they want the public to be able to come in and use technology for many people in the community who don't necessarily have access to that. Yes, Kate? I want to give a, since we're talking about meetings, I'll give a public service announcement for the PADAX, Potomac Area Technology and Computer Society. February 17th, uh, I'm giving a talk on iPad and iPhone together at last. And it's my experience of starting out with an iPad, adding an iPhone, and just how well they, they work together. Uh, and the meeting is very near here. It's on Roberts Road, which is the... The meeting is on Roberts Road, which is right near, uh, right on the border of the George Mason campus. So it's a lot easier than getting to this through all the twisty little passages. You can stay out on real streets and drive down Roberts Road. Uh, it's the it's the, at the Ollie Center, if you know where uh, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute is. 
Um, so iPad, iPhone together at last. It's the same talk that I did at the Thursday meeting several months ago. If I could ask a question, um, could you maybe forward an email with some information sure, to sure. Me, Jonathan or sure. somebody so that you can distribute it? To Absolutely. All? Yeah, and actually, I wanted to add on to that, Gabe. Thanks for mentioning it. That, you know, we're really trying to look for opportunities to do things a little differently if it helps. And one thing that we're going to experiment with, because that date is a date that we're going to, in one of our two February uh, clubhouse ads, Zoom or whatever platform they use to stream their meetings to see if we can participate uh, if, for example, they have iOS questions that we might be in a better position to help with. So uh, I'll, we'll have to actually uh, uh, try that, Gabe. We'll have to see how it works uh, and then crow about it if it does. <laughs> what was the date again? February 17th, Saturday, meeting starts at 1 o'clock. And same similar format here, starts with a Q&A. Terrific. What's Question? PADACS, P-A-T-A-C-S. So you can go to patacs.org and read all about it. It stands for Potomac Area Technology and Computer Society, a name that only a committee could have thought up. <laughs> and it was thought up because it was the merger of two other groups, Nicticug and Waka. <laughs> and I will not try to spell out what those letters stood for, but they were both user groups started in the late 70s, before Windows, before any of the things that we use now. One of them, I think, started with Commodore, and I can't remember what the other one was, but they noticed that the industry was changing. Both evolved towards Windows. After a while, they figured out there was strength in numbers and joined together. Um, can I also uh, take advantage of the time now? Uh, we are actually, Roy and Larry are going to do an, a, a mobile lifestyle <laughs> SIG um, right after lunch. So we are going to do a pizza lunch after the program. A raise of hands for how many people would like to participate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like we're a bit between 10 and 12. What time? Yeah, I mean, yeah. the yeah, I'm probably uh, 12 30 or so. Yes, question. I'd like to make a comment. You mentioned we're going to have to be talking about security. Yes. In a future meeting, recommend that they have talk about your. your or everyone's digital estate. So if you're, if you're incapacitated or when you pass away, how does somebody get access it or take over or close it out? Do you know, I'm glad you raised that because uh, I don't know uh, how many people have accessed recently the Pi podcasts in the member services area. Uh, a number of months ago, uh, Jay did a terrific program uh, based on a take control book about your digital legacy. And some portion of that actually dealt with some of the very issues that you're talking about, Norman. Yeah, that's, uh, I, in the, my business, that's what I run into. People have a, a digital estate, they don't even know what it is. So let's see, when you start, <coughs> try to explain your physical estate versus your digital, two different worlds. Well, you know what would be very helpful if you have a chance to go through the member services on the Pi homepage mm -hmm. Uh, to the podcast of Jay with that lecture, um, you know, watch it and let me know if you think there are leftover issues that we'd want to take up. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Are you all uh, Larry? Okay, um, uh, I am happy to, happy to present um, Larry Kirschberg and Roy Wagner uh, on curating your photos. Could you describe your technology? <laughs> uh, all we need is the iPhone, <coughs> but we're going to need that space here. 
because we, we have a projector which is 1970s. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know how. Oh. Okay, start over. <laughs> the the site you want to go to is apple.com/today, and you'll see it come up with a lot of sessions. And then once you pick a session or something like that, you put in you put in your local store, whatever store. It shows you what it shows you stores in the area, locates them, and you can pick which store you want to go to, and then you schedule a date, and you basically make an appointment. 
and you're not committed to anything, you know, financial thing or anything like that. If you don't show up, you don't show up. And both of them, I think, I think the drawing one, somebody didn't show up, so there was only two of us, so it was a one-on-one, -on -one, which was great. And the photography one, there was only another person that went along. And so it was just the two of us that went on the walk. So I don't know how big the classes can get, or how many, where there is the limit of the, of the class. These were, and, yes? At Montgomery Mall, they went six to eight. So that's all they contributed to. Yes, at the table. Okay, six to eight. They're very popular at the Montgomery Mall? Okay. So you might find that, and you could schedule quite a bit in advance, but uh, certainly a great way to, to learn more about your devices. And a matter of fact, even the person that did the, the drawing one, he said one of his specialties was also desktops. That's what he, he did a lot of stuff on the Macs and the Mac desktops in classes. So they may even have those. I, I just looked at two that were relevant to my interest. Um, so are we ready to? Question. Yes. Well. I didn't look closely at it. I just saw the, the one I went, the, they were at 12.30 to 2, and they were Saturday and Sunday. One was a Sunday one, and I think the one I went to, the drawing one, was like on a Thursday. So I guess it varies whenever they want to take it. Maybe, maybe they make it time at off time. Yes? I don't know. I didn't ask. Yes? Okay. Sunday through Saturday. Sunday through Oh, Sunday through Saturday, they're available. Okay. So go there if you want to learn some stuff and, and get almost like a one-on-one -on -one maybe, or if not, just a small group and learn a lot about some specific area of your pad or your devices uh, from Apple. It's, it seems like a great thing they're offering. and they're, So I was very pleased. We'll try, but I think it's going to turn on this projector, but we'll see. So how was this adjusted? That's about the best, unless we get a book or something. Oh, where is that? This is a little, this is a little higher, but not much. But it's going to be close. Well, closer won't be good. No, I think it's better. It's more um, stable. Let's see. Um, this will boost it. If we get five iPads, <laughs> we'll be able to do it. Let's put it on the case. This should do it. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, that's got another projector in there. <laughs> How's that? Why? More square on to the direction the screen is oh, facing yeah. out. Yeah. Well, the angle can go because you're off to one side. If you can manage to rearrange We'll just lean over a little bit. Or how about project? Well, it's got wheels. That's pretty good. There we go. That's good. That's good. The, now you have to stay right there. <laughs> well, um, the reason we're going old school is that they. It, yeah, it's on. It's it's for the recording. So the reason we're going old school is that over the break they installed a new system 
and all the tech uh, people are at home enjoying themselves because they only work Monday through Friday. And we had students who I think did some heroic work here to get us going. So I have not, I, since I work at George Mason, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> they did a good job. So show of hands, how many of you take photos? Hey, no wonder we have so many of you here today. So how many of you use uh, your iPhone? How many of you have uh, an SLR or DSLR? OK. Um, how many of you have tried to organize your photos but have failed miserably? Hey, that's everybody. All right. So that's why we're here. We're here to muddle the waters a little more. I have my colleague Roy Wagner here who knows everything you need to know about iPhoto. I'm sorry, that's the wrong app. Yeah. It's the Photos app. So how many of you remember iPhoto? How many of you remember Aperture? How many of you are fed up with Apple changing without letting us know? <laughs> All right, so I'm the one who's going to talk about another product called uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, all right? So why do we want to organize our photos? Well, Jay introduced us to the idea of a digital legacy because even when we pass, perhaps someone in our family will inherit our photos. And they, they, want, they want to make heads and tails of them, so it's up to us to curate them. So if you think of curation, you think of, say, a museum and a curator of an exhibition or a curator for a collection. And what you do there is you behold the object, like this iPad, and you say, my, this looks cool. And then you say, well, what can I describe about it? Well, I can talk about its dimensions. I can talk about the screen. I can talk about its features. I can characterize it in terms of a lot of metadata. So the meta, when we talk about metadata, it's data about the data. And uh, it, whether you know it or not, when you take a picture in iPhoto, I'm sorry, photos, um, that image has a lot of metadata associated with it. Because we have GPS, embedded in our phones, certainly it's going to tell us the location where we took the picture. And so we want to uh, use that metadata and add to it as we curate our photos. Uh, so Roy is going to talk about photos for Mac OS and iOS. Uh, I'm going to talk about Adobe Lightroom Creative Cloud and Photoshop, uh, which you can use for Mac OS, iOS, as well as Windows. And one of our uh, members who recently moved to New Hampshire, Ken Goldman, he has a PC dedicated just for his collection of photos. All right. So we're going to get you to also share your experiences with curation because I know some of you are pretty avid photographers. And uh, then we're going to have a couple of demos. And we may actually put the demos in between, like when you. We were, but now because we don't have a dual screen, we have to do it okay. after. After. So basically, um, here we have it. Uh, curation denotes the selection, organization, presentation of objects in an exhibition. If you think about it, that's sort of a dictionary definition. Um, what we want to do is import photos from our phones, tablets, and cameras into photos or Lightroom. Uh, we want to be able to back up the originals to a safe place. We want to be able to organize our photos into folders and albums. Uh, we want to tag our photos with keywords, titles, 
captions, location, and other, and the like. All right? We want to recognize and tag people in our photos. And I think Apple is very good with photos that uh, they do it on our phones. They don't send it to the cloud. The, the software is, resides on our phones and looks for uh, faces. Uh, we want to search for specific photos and then share photo albums with friends, maybe on Facebook or a messaging app. And we'd like our photos to reside on the web. Okay, so that's why we would curate photos. It didn't capture all the screens I needed to demonstrate this, but we'll do it in the demo section. Um, in your preferences on your desktop you, and, and on your pad, you have the option of turning on the, um, let's see, I'm trying to look at it this way and can't see it close here either. Um, turning on your i stream, your iPads, your, the photo stream, or saving to the iCloud. And there's a bit of confusion. Apple has confused that just as they did with the photo aperture photos transition. They've really confused what happens between putting it into my stream or using the cloud. And this is your first level of backing up and curating your photos in some respects is the ultimate thing you really should, you probably should use iCloud. You should probably should turn that on. They give you some storage when you get your device. They give you five bytes to start with. If you want, you can pay for additional storage. And if you go to it, um, it may ask you when you're short on storage if you've got a lot of apps. Or you can go to the um, where it shows the storage, the iCloud uh, um, in the settings. You can see how much storage is being used and see what the prices are for additional storage. I think it's, it's like 99 cents for an additional 20 gigs, or not an additional, but 20 gigs of storage. And then it goes up. You can have 100 gigs, and you can have two, two terabytes or something. But it gets, it gets expensive. The trade-off there is if you're going to create, you want your photos saved somewhere, you're going to have to buy some place to store them anyway. You're going to have to buy a device. So trade off the prices of where you want to store them. And, but, one thing you want to look at is the storage that you do have. It's kind of, um, Apple's kind of promoting the fact of buying more storage per, if you're using the cloud. They want you to buy more storage. And curating, in my, in my mind, is getting them off that cloud and putting them someplace else for additional backup. So you really want to monitor whether you're using cloud. If you're using my stream and not the cloud, this is the real catch. The way that operates is it will store 1,000 photos or 30 days of images 
and then they just disappear. Um, you want to make sure in that case that if that's on your home computer device, uh, on your desktop, and you're seeing my stream there, and you don't have iCloud turned on, you want to back those up so they don't just disappear. Yes? No. The iCloud exists. If you get rid of your iCloud, they go. Um, you can log in on your desktop to the iCloud and copy them. That I found is very awkward. I don't know why they made it so awkward trying to use iCloud connection. You have to copy photo by photo and it was very hard to do it. Yes? Which is what? Uh, my photos, it's like you're saying that if I delete this here, it'll delete them all. Like yes. But it keeps coming back, like redoing it. it keeps oh. I mean, it's so. Uh, yes, she was saying that she she's using the cloud, and when she deletes photos, they come back. I haven't seen that, and that would be the other wor warning I have, is when you do use the iCloud, Apple's conception of that is that the iCloud is going to be used on all your devices. You should really turn it on for everything, your desktop, your iPad, your iPhone, because you want that universal iCloud. You want that. Yeah. Now, the stream might be popping them back or something else. But if you use the cloud, the word of caution is don't think that you're using your device and husband, wife, spouse, family, whoever's using your device, and they say, I don't like this picture of me. I'm going to delete it. They delete it, and you may have wanted it. It's gone. And they may know that too. Well, it's not quite gone. I shouldn't say that. It's not quite gone. It's in limbo state. But it does disappear from visibility on your devices and on your desktop and everywhere. And it does it rather quick. I was testing that before the meeting <laughs> to delete something. And on my desktop, boof, it disappears from my display. Um, but it goes to deleted photos. And that hangs around for 30 days. And if you go to deleted photos, you'll see the photos that you have marked deleted. So do you have a chance to recover it or see if somebody else has deleted them? So they're not totally gone. Two words. Two words. Time machine, yes. Well, we're going to talk about that. Time machine backs them up and things like that. But that's turning it on. So you've got your options, iCloud library, download the originals to the Mac. You want that. You want the originals. You don't want um, compressed files. On your device, you now have the option of putting compressed files. You may see that now in some of the updates of the iOS. It will put a compressed file, the picture, on your device. And the picture will look fine, but when you select it or want to edit it, it'll have to download it. And it might say it can't download it because you're not connected to any you know, Wi-Fi or your phone service. So that's an option to save space on your devices rather than deleting them, save them compressed. Um, so that's how you're using it. Uh, there's sharing option there, summarizing photos, but importing general copy items. Uh, importing as copy items to the library is the one option, and turning on the iCloud with its options. Yes? I don't really understand that summarized photos
just updating my operating system recently. Every time I start photos recently, it seems to want to update the library to do some organization. Maybe it's because of the new di direct neck on the desktop. Maybe it's because of the file directory structure that we talked about the new update of High Sierra changing to. Maybe that's why it has to change the photos. But you'll see if you search for things, various explanations on regular stream, the iCloud library, um, how it stores it, the differences. Um, the regular photo stream does not use your iCloud storage allotment. That's one thing. So your five gigabytes that they give you for apps and things like that is not <coughs> using it. Uh, there's, there's a whole lot of details about the differences between them. So as long as you have enough space in the cloud, but the, my photo stream uploads your last 30 days and up to uh, 1,000 photos. So if you go on a long trip, you might take more than 1,000, so they might just start working off the stream there, so you don't want to do that. Um, let's see. Okay. Now we're going to talk about, we're going to get back to now that we've, now that we've got our photos taken in one way or the other, and they are on our device, um, what we do, we're assuming the photos have somehow come to your desktop. My stream or iCloud, they should be accessible on your desktop. The other, other option you do have is, that I think Larry might talk about as well, just getting them from a, a separate digital camera into the device. But automatically, Apple should put them, uh, make them available on your desktop. So now we're taking it from the point that they are in your desktop, how you select, what you do is selecting the photos mod and creating an album and modifying. And this is, this is the procedure that I use to curate my photos after a trip. So this is the type of um, curating and backing up. I'm talking about desktop, not iPhotos, photos. So I'm talking about using photos on your desktop, not, not your phone or anything. And Apple allows you if, you, if you load your photos app, you'll see that it has various albums and various types of albums. Um, so one set of albums that it, it has is very, it breaks them down into the types of photo or types of digital photos that are there, whether they're videos. When you take a selfie, it, puts, it knows it's a selfie because you've taken it with the front camera or something. And live photos, long exposures, panoramas, bursts, screenshots. Screenshots when you do the saving of some place where you've been and you press the, the restart button and the bottom button or somehow you're taking a screen image from your pad or device or phone that saves those and animated things. That's one set of albums that breaks down the types. Apple automatically basically curates those for you in, a, in albums. Um, shared albums, you can set up, and that's when you want to share your photos with other family members or other people in general. You want to put them together like, you can see at mine, I've got the 2017 trip to England. When my, my wife and I have separate accounts, so when she takes pictures and I want her pictures, she puts them in the For Roy. And I put her, my pictures in the for Margaret so she can grab them and put them on her device. Uh, family, pie meeting, we once shared them on a pie meeting. My albums is the, the basic starting of curation. That's, you want to go to the, and this will show in the demo, you pull down the menu and you select, you want to create, you, you select a series of pictures is the, is the first start. Let's see if I got that on the, I don't have it, and that's what I wanted to really show. But, when you have all your pictures showing, you could select a bunch of pictures. Now you can go up to the menu and you select album, create an album. And if you select my album, it'll take the pictures you selected and put them in an album together. Um, like apple pie, pictures for apple pie, Williamsburg trip, put them, put them there, I selected them. The other thing it will do um, is you can create a smart album. And say you go on a trip and you've got a certain date you went on the trip, you can go to Smart Album, you say, I want all the images from this trip um, between this date put in an album and I'm going to call it my trip to England or something like that. But it's got a whole series of options of what type of pictures, what you want to create an album based on. It can be based on dates, date ranges, type of pictures. I wish I could show you from the device, but we'll show that later in the demo. And that's a Smart Album. That's the one that's got the little wheel that says like trip, or recent, like if you want to just see the recent pictures that you've taken in an album, you can say the past 30 days, the past two weeks, or whatever date you want, you can see the most recent ones. 
I have one that's called all because I found out a little thing that I didn't like about photos is it wouldn't allow you to sort your photos by various options. It had its own deep. I forgot what the two were, but they weren't very useful. So I created an album that I say, these are all my pictures. And I either control A and select all my pictures and mouse them over to the all folder. And it won't duplicate them. It'll only create single images. And, or you could put a date range. You create a smart all folder that is a whole date range. And that you can sort. And you've got much more sorting options if you go to sort. And you see, what I found is I wanted to do sorting. And I went over and sort was grayed out. And I found if you set up an album, you can do the sort options on the album. And that's another reason to set up an album. Um, the other thing you can also set up is a folder. And you'll see my, my albums are within a folder. So you can collect things together in a folder, just like you would do on a desktop within your Photos app. Um, so I have trips, and I broke the trip into three sections and put different groups there. OK, the top of one I didn't explain, moments. There's a moments option that you can select. And when you select moments, Apple automatically comes and presents a slideshow of a given section of your photos. It looks at them. It puts a little slideshow together. And it's a moment in your life and a moment in your photos. It's really, really kind of nice. It's kind of automatically done. Um, so we've talked about all the albums and putting folders. So we've talked about all this. Yes, question. Does folder have a copy and album have a copy? No, and folder. Moment have a copy. Yeah, he was asking whether you put different folders are basically you have one photo on here in in photos, and all the albums you create are basically pointers to that photo. So if you delete that photo, it's going to delete out of your album. If you delete a photo that's in your album, if you go into your album and you're deleting photos, because you're maybe curating a trip, you may go to a trip. The thing I usually do when we come back from a trip is I've got all my photos in there. First thing I do is create an album for that trip. And then I go to that album and I start getting rid of the garbage that's in there, even though the other photos are still still existing. Yes? You can nest uh, folders. You can nest, uh, yes, you can nest folders. Yes. Yes. Uh, once you put a fo uh, photo in a album or a directory, uh, does it identify that that photo has been assigned to an album? No. <coughs> so you really can't? Um, that yeah. you get with keywords and things, other things that we'll get to coming up. Yes. Um, he was saying, can I you know, designate, or does it, desi does it show you what folder your, your pictures are in? It does not. Well, can you put more than, can you put a copy of a picture that you've got in album A into album X? Yes. Yeah, you, you can put both stayed the same place. because there's multiple pointers to that one original photo. So you can put one photo in as many folders as you want, or it can appear in as many albums, albums, not folders. It'll appear in as many albums as you want it to. But again, once you delete it, if you delete the master photo, the one photo, it's going to delete out of all your albums. The pointers are like aliases. On yes, that they're like aliases. Aliases or the pointer it doesn't delete the original item. The in the folder, it does not delete the original item. Right, if you delete it from there. Question? When I go on a trip, I take two cameras, generally. My iPhone, my Nikon D850, which has humongous size photographs. Where do you put these together, or how do you put them together for your final get together? Because they're 50 megabytes or larger per photo with the, with the D850. Where do you put them, or? Yeah, yeah. how do you integrate the huge ones, with the, the small ones? The I just, well, on my desktop, I just have them both. I mean, they're both on my desktop. They're not in the cloud. Well, let's see. Apple will try to put them. We'll get to that kind, well, we'll get to that in a moment okay. by, by the other alternate library thing. Right, right now, this is a shared library we're talking about. We'll get to the independent libraries next. Yes? There's a lot of metadata embedded in each photo, but as near as I can tell, Apple doesn't let you see a lot of that right. stuff. And for example, if you have photos from different streams, sometimes it would be useful to be able to sort them by the time that the photo was taken to put them in chronological sequence mm -hmm. across different cameras. But I don't know how to do that. Let's see. 
Well, it has the time that it was taken. This is, this is an example of the limited meta metadata that Apple does make available to you. Because that's the next thing we were gonna, I'm coming to. Now that you've got your album of all your photos from, let's say, a trip. Let's use that as the one thing we're going to curate as a trip. So you got your album that you've, yes, oh, another. <laughs> so you get them in from PhotoStream. Yes. And you have the checkbox copied to my computer. Right. So they are in this, let's call it limbo area. You're now transferring them all to your folder called all. That's if I transfer all of them. Let's talk about a vacation let's, one. We, let's assume oh, you okay. transfer all of them. Yeah. So the ones you don't transfer, so you've got 10 pictures, you transfer eight of them. What happens to those two pictures? Well, they're still in your universal collection of all photos. I mean, all is just a secondary one that I create okay. so that I can use some of the sort options that right. don't seem to apply on my whole collection of photos. So when you're talking about deleting that master photo, where do you go to delete those two. Oh, the top thing on the list is photos. Okay. So when you click on photos, you'll see them by date and by location displayed in photos. Um, okay. We'd have to go back to another screen. But you'll see them displayed there, and then that's where you, when you're looking at your photos individually, it'll put them by date into groups. And that's groups. where you'd want to delete the ones that you don't really care about. Right. Okay. That might be your first cut even before creating an album. You can, Perfect. it's kind of a trade-off the way you, the way you do it. Um, we're going to talk about a backup and one, th oh, yes. Can you password protect your master photo? Ooh. Lock it. I don't think you can lock a photo. You can hide it. That's another option so that it isn't seen. But I don't think you can lock it. I think it's just locked by going in, by just being on your, well, yeah, I don't think you can lock a photo so that okay. it doesn't get deleted. So each, each photo is not a file by itself. It's an, yeah, each one is an individual file, each in that photo. Case you, it seems to me then you should be able to put a lock on it. You, what Larry said, you no, might you be can't. able to do it externally. Yes, you might be able to go where it is stored and find it. That, although it's a little, you don't have to find it where it's stored in photos um, to lock it. But like yeah. You right click on a Yes, but I think the first step of curating, or what we're going to get to about curating, kind of is sort of like a lock. Um, now I'll, I'll get back to the fact that we're, I'm going to not talk about modifying data quite yet, because the first thing I do on a trip when I get back is I create that album for that trip, and I move all my photos into that album. And we're, it, it's, this can vary by how you want to curate your photos. But what I often do when I get back from a trip, I collect all the photos, I try to get my wife's photos, I get them onto my computer, I put them all in this photo of our trip. The first step I do, which we're gonna to get to, and I know I'm kind of putting this two different ways, first thing I do is I back that up. And that is basically like the old days of having a set of negatives. That is a set backed up, and when you back up, the first level of backing up is backing up to an external folder on your desktop. So photos that are in my album to an external photo, and those are unmodified, which we'll see, photos from my trip. That way, basically, I'm not gonna lose anything that I mess around with in photos because I've got the original somewhere, like the negatives that you used to have in the old days. Can so. I suggest that for those who use Time Machine, and really just about everybody ought to be using it, that you could also in addition to, or instead of, initiate a manual backup of time machine work. You know, on the menu, if you have it in the menu bar, there's one that says backup now. If you right. Hit that, it'll run, and it will get everything yep. that's changed, including all these nice new photos. Yes. So That's another level. Bruce is suggesting doing a time machine backup, forcing a time machine backup once you've got your photos once that you, on your once they're on your Mac. Yeah, we're going to get, when we get to backups, we'll see multiple levels of backing up. Yeah, so now we're going to talk, now we've got our album, we've got our trip. 
now we want to start modifying that album to be what we want to save. Either we've pre-deleted some of the really bad things. I mean, you might do that even before you create the album. You might see these pictures of your feet and pictures you didn't intend to take and things like that. You might get rid of those. I just move them in the album. I work with, within the album. The first cut, first cut's going through there, just getting rid of bad photos. From and I haven't gotten rid of the originals. They're still kind of hanging around. But I've gotten rid of the bad ones in there. Now, metadata, this is where you augment your photos for um, working with them. Uh, and, and this isn't editing the photos. This, that's another step that we aren't even going to talk about. But you can get in there and start editing, modifying the colors. And, but editing the metadata, the first, this is what you get displayed on a blank. If that's a photo, which I've selected, and you, you, could select, you have to select them one at a time. Well, you can select them in groups, too. But the things you could change that it shows, it shows you details about the photo. So the first thing on the top of the list is add a title. So right away, I could add a title to this picture and call it wreath. You could have a whole selection of photos and name. You can select, if you've selected 10 photos, you can keep, you can put all this on in the same photo or several photos, one or more. We're dealing with a one-on-one. -on -one. So I can add a title. The next thing it shows is the way it was designated in the camera, IMG uh, 1309 J, JPEG. You can rename that photo right there, too. You can rename what, what the file is now going to be named. So that's what the file is. It's just, it's just the default. The next thing is the date the photo was taken. Sometimes we've come back on trips, and we've traveled different time zones and different things like that. You can actually select a group of photos, go up to the time adjust, and change the time to be correct for the time zone you were in for the trip, in case you, your phone wasn't updating. Yes? You can change the date and time. Um, what? For a bunch of photos, yeah. I, sometimes I'll select a bunch that are just, I, we were traveling and we were in a different time zone and I know, or. One, one trip we went on and my wife's phone was in, we were, this was external cameras. This is when we were taking them on different cameras and not our phones. And we hadn't changed the time. And hers was like two hours different from mine. So when we merged the photos, they didn't merge together because her time was a different time. And so I had to change the time. So that's a case where you might want to use it. Usually on a phone, it's updating every time it gets a Wi-Fi signal or a phone signal. Yes? How did you get to the metadata? Oh. You click, you right click on the photo, and there's a little info, get info. Get info. Get info. And on editing, there's a little eye in a circle that you'll see also up in the top of the, of the bar. So you can change date and time appropriate as you need to. I found there are some little glitches to doing this, so be alert to maybe some frustrations when you do change the time and dates. And sometimes it does strange things. Can you change the metadata on the phone on the iPad, or this is only on no. Yeah, that's one thing I found the limitation of a phone and a pad is you could not change metadata. I know, maybe, but someday it might be there, suddenly they put an update, but that's a frustrating thing is you can't really edit, edit a lot of information about the photos on your devices. I've got two out of three, the phone and the tablet, not the Mac. Yeah, ah, yeah. There are metadata programs that you can download, apps. And they will allow you to change it, and they'll give you more data, more details. This is just what the desktop gives you. OK, the next shows that it was taken with an iPhone 6S. Um, it says the camera was the back camera. It shows the millimeter, the lens, the F setting, old camera terms, new camera terms, the size of the photo, how many pixels it was, the size by, um, well, the size by 3,024 3, by 4,032 is the size in pixels. And then 2.4 megabytes is how big it's using to store the picture. And then it says it's a JPEG. It's got the ISO, again, the millimeter, um, exposure, f-stop, time, one, one second. Now, this is all default stuff. This is not stuff I set, although there are apps you can buy to set these things on a device, a phone. Uh, now we get down to the next thing you could change is add a description. So in this case, I might say, you know, trip to England or something like that. And that's where I might change a whole series of the photos. Um, the next one is add keyword. And I think I put that slide here. No, I didn't. Do, do, do. Ah. Oh, it didn't get here. Yeah. Okay. 
So you could change keywords. So you can add keywords saying trips, travel, family, names of people, whatever you want. Every time you add a keyword, it stores them in a keyword list in which you can pick. And so when you start typing it, it says it completes the word that you're after. Uh, when you're trying to find photos, you can find them by keyword. Apple's kind of introduced finding things by default, like you put dogs or something like that, it'll find pictures of dogs even though you didn't designate them dogs. It'll find them by albums. Um, the next thing it also shows you if the GPS is operating, where the, where the photo was taken. Sometimes you might have to modify that on a trip because it might not be accurate, but you can modify that. So, moving on. The other thing you can do, as we said, we're working all within the system photo library. That's where iCloud, iCloud photos will be stored. The next thing you can do is if you hold the option key down and go to the icon to start photos, it'll give you the option of creating a new library. This is also what I do on a trip. When I, when I get all those photos offloaded after I've changed the metadata, after I got them edited and everything like that, or even before, even before, I back them up to the folder and um, I create a new library. So here's like 2017 England trip or Florida trip. And then when you create that library, I take the photos that I've exported and I import the photos into that new library. Now that new library is not on the cloud. It is a separate library. And I kind of prefer that for, for the next level of editing the photos because that's where you're going to really do and collect your trip together. I mean, maybe you're not sharing anything at this time, but you're collecting and you're really doing that in a separate library that's not the photo stream. You could delete them wherever your security level, wherever your thought process is. You can delete them from your shared library and create some more memory to store pictures because you've got them in another library. But again, we get the backups. So you can create, how many can you create? You can create as many as you can create, as, as much memory as you've got. I've even got some iPhoto libraries there, you'll see. You'll see. But uh, So you create as many as you want. They're individual. You're importing in the picture. Define quote, system photo library. Yeah. System photo library is the one that you turn on the iCloud feature in. If you create another library, you do not want to go to preferences and turn on iPhoto because now your iPhotos will go to that new library. There's only one. You can only have one system iCloud library. So you can designate a new library to be the system. Yes, you can designate another one. So you could back up by year. You could have one and next year starts, you could have a new library in which you're moving your photos to. Or every six months. Look, Yes. Uh, you we talked about this a long time back. What's the size limitation for iPhoto library? Okay. Photo library? It was like a five gigabyte mm. something of that when it starts acting. I'm not. You can uh, get as much iCloud storage as you need. I don't want to use There was a time or through iterations that photos and iPhotos operated poorly the more photos you had. So that was another reason to have more photo libraries is just to reduce down that is not dealing with 40,000 pictures you know, or whatever. I think my main library is 4,000, which is too big. Okay, now we're going to talk about exporting. And this is at any level. You could export this from your shared library. You could export this from your separate library. When you click the export option, you'll have two choices. And this is really kind of important. You can export as edited. That's important if you made any edits. If you've added metadata, or you've changed the colors, or cropped them, or whatever, you want to you want to save them as um, the top one. Save your items. The second one is unmodified. That's saving just the originals. So that one, I'm not sure why you'd want to go back to the originals or save it, but it would be a library. It won't have any of the edits. It won't carry that weight along with. Yes. If you save unmodified, if you save as edited, does that also save the unmodified versions, or does it just save the edited versions? It's it save. You can go back. You can. Um, I believe you can go back. It, so it, it does. It, it saves everything okay. to iterate back. So that's probably the better one to use. If yes, you can, I can you. almost see no reason to save the unmodified originals. Uh, yes. No, the cloud, the cloud is always existing. When you're exporting them, you're just exporting another copy. So, so that's exporting. Um, now we're just the backup. 
back up three times more than that even. You, you basically have a backup automatically in the cloud. You have your time machine backup. That's backing up your photos. So those are both kind of automatic if you're using the cloud. The next backup to do is back up the exported photos. So once you've created a folder and backed it up, now you can, back, you can either create a CD-ROM of that photo. It's very easy to do that, burn a CD. Or you can copy that photo to another drive. Um, you can also back up any new libraries you've created. Because you've got the folder creating the individual folder, folders in their modified version. Your library now has a library. You can back that up. Um, and then those backups, you want, to, you want to know where they are. And in any case of any backup, it's really good to have a remote backup. Give it to a neighbor. Give it to a, another family member, whatever. Get it out of your house in case your house burns down, gets robbed, or anything like that. You have your photos someplace else. But the cloud, of course, is existing. But if you've gotten taken photos out of the cloud, you need to back those up. You can back up to a physical drive. Also, when you're taking photos with your iPhone, you can also turn on that, that Google has a save option. It'll save your photos. Um, Amazon has an option that it'll upload your photos and save them. And if you have Dropbox, Dropbox will also take your photos and automatically move them to storage. So there's various options. There's various things that I'm not going to get into about how they operate with those different storages and how they all should be fairly secure. But what they do with your photos is another thing and, and uh, what's happening with them. OK, that's, uh, we're gonna, Larry's got to get up to his thing. So we're going to go over to Larry. OK, uh, okay. I can take some questions. <laughs> Any questions? I know I haven't covered it very. Yeah, Roy, I, I, I don't know if I missed it. You talked about it. But um, one thing that I've done is use Google Photos as a backup for my photos. And I found using Google Photos as a backup of all my photos. Yes. Because Google doesn't seem to mind if I upload gazillions of them. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the Google Photos first was able to search for content of the, fo of the, the pictures. Right. And Photos is actually now able to do that, too. Yes. Yes. It doesn't care if you put up gazillions if you let them compress them. If you want them at full size, then they, then they start, when you fill up your thing, then you start paying money. So I actually use it for all my reference photos that I don't care about is what I put in my Google. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually have a separate account for that. Yeah. So there's all those different ways, and that's how you're curating your photos, basically backing them up, putting all the identifications, changes, backing them up, making sure you've gotten backed up, put them in categories. And then, you know, secondary to that, of course, you could create slideshows and move the album to a shared album. So any other questions? And we'll find out about the, oh. If I have photos saved in a couple of different places, and in some cases the collections overlap, and I import from one that I haven't imported from before, and there are, there's a duplication issue, would photos simply take everything, suck everything in, or would it actually not take ones that are already in the collection. Apple tries to identify duplicates and it'll tell you, it'll show them match to match and say, do you want to back up one to one or what do you want to do with them? And usually okay, it's, so you it don't want to back note, up duplicates. It will notice that they are they, looking at the image, even if they had, say, different names. I think in different names it might confuse Apple. There are some others that look <clears> at the metadata and look at the, the pixel count or the, the checksum of the photo and know that it's a the photo, but I'm not sure. Because I had a bunch of them that I, so you may I end up changed with the names already on them. Yeah, I have seen duplicates pop up, and I said, well, they're the same, but they're, maybe I cropped it, maybe I changed some slight thing. But So, so I, I wondered if it was comparing the actual image yeah. content. As you want to kind of get names. everything set up before you do any modifications, and then work, it, work with it from there. Yes? I thought that photos kept the original in any case. Yes. Photos does keep the original. You can always back 
to it. We're, we're talking about if you export modified, whether when you bring it back into a library, it's still got the original, and it should at that case. So, um, and just one point I noticed too is when you modify a photo, any minor modification you make, the file size really increases quickly. <laughs> you know, I don't know what, they, what they're using the space for, but <laughs> it's like more than double <laughs> the minute you make one change. So they start storing a lot more information. Thank you, Roy. Larry, just So I want to ask, how many of you subscribe to the Washington Post? When I ask my students where you get your news, they say Facebook. <coughs> they, don't, they don't read the newspaper, right? So how many of you subscribe to magazines? Like Atlantic, Monday, everybody, right? Now we're seeing a trend in software toward subscription services. How many of you use Microsoft Office. So you're paying for that, right? Well, huh? not, if, not unless you have a box version you bought and installed. Will it still? Will it still run? Absolutely. That's good. That's good. It's not running in the new operating system. Let's see, High Sierra. Sierra, High Sierra. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they want you to move to the cloud. They want. They give. They offer you a terabyte of. Microsoft does terabyte of storage in OneDrive, and your um, software is constantly being updated. That brings me to um, the Adobe line of products, the Creative Cloud. And they have a lot of apps, and they've moved to a subscription model, and people actually pay for these subscriptions. All right? I don't know if you can read it. Um, for those who are photographers, they have Lightroom Creative Cloud. And they also have, that's $9.99 a month. So that would be like $120 a year. They have photography plan. Uh, and you get for that um, $9.99, you get Lightroom Creative Cloud to edit. You get a terabyte of cloud storage, so you can have your own website. And they publish it. It's like one, two, three. You don't have to do anything. Um, you can get up to 10 terabytes of cloud storage if you really have a big collection. All right. The photography plan is $9.99. Uh, and you can choose 20 gigabytes or one terabyte so you get Lightroom CC to edit and organize. You get Photoshop, and you get Lightroom Classic. And Lightroom Classic is your desktop version of Lightroom. And that's where you can do the more sophisticated curation, especially in terms of adding metadata, much more than just Lightroom CC. And I'll give you a demo of both, all right? Um, and what's the same price? That price is $9.99 a month, but you don't get as much storage on, uh, on the cloud. Yeah, well, you get, you get an extra program, which is Lightroom Classic CC. So why do you have that one? Because some people are satisfied with Lightroom. I would compare Lightroom Creative Cloud with Photos App in terms of the kind of editing you can do. And then, uh, for the, uh, but you can do more with Lightroom Creative Cloud Classic, the desktop version. So let me ask you, how many of you um, shoot in camera raw? All right, yeah. So some of us want to use camera raw. Why would you do that? Higher quality. You get more megapixels, right? megabytes of storage, like 40 to 80 megabytes per, per image. Why would you use it? More editing options. More editing options. So we'll get into that. Um, with RAW, it's, it's an encoding of the image that 
keeps all the metadata about the image, including how the image was shot. And when you develop, you can say, well, I want to see what the camera would have seen if it were daylight or cloudy or under tungsten lighting. And how would that image look? So you, I'll, I'll demo that. And you get that much more control in editing, which you don't get at all in photos. However, you can shoot camera raw in your, you can't, sh you, you shoot JPEG out of your iPhone. But there are other apps. The one uh, that I have here is called ProCam. And ProCam will allow you to shoot camera raw images on your iPhone. So for those of you who want that extra quality, that's a, an app to get. ProCam, P-R-O-C-A-M. Oh, uh, I think on most of them, this is the iPhone X, uh, iPhone 10. You'll have to try. If you can buy it, it'll work on it. All right? I think it will. Um, just as you can shoot with a photo with your uh, camera on the iPhone, Adobe has Creative Cloud apps for the iPhone also. So, uh, for example, I have Lightroom CC here. I have Photoshop Express. So you can do your editing right on the phone. Okay? And it will allow you, I believe, to edit camera raw, even on the phone, through Photoshop. Uh, now this plan is like all-you-can-eat plan. It, all of the Adobe apps. And as an educator, I got a 50% discount, so I'm paying half as much. But that's like $500 a year. So not everyone's going to go for that. I mean, we want to just, yeah, but you get Dreamweaver, you get uh, InDesign, you get uh, some of the others that I've never used. But I used Dreamweaver. That's what I got it. But we have a new version of Blackboard that doesn't allow me to use Dreamweaver, so I might just go to the 999 plan. Uh, that would be enough for me. So those are the plans, but you don't get something for nothing in this world. You have to pay, right? Yes, sir? Uh, this is not for educators. I, I pay half that much. So if you're associated with a school, uh, I don't even know. Maybe a nonprofit could take advantage of that. You'll have to check on the, their website. Right? <laughs> Precisely. Well, you got to check. So I talked about subscription services. We're not going to get away from them. They're coming. You just have to decide whether you want to pay the price. All right? Um, what Adobe Creative Cloud does, it gives you industry-leading software. You can't do better than Photoshop and Lightroom that I know. There are others trying to compete. And you have cloud storage for your photos and albums. You have the two versions, the Creative Cloud Lightroom Classic, which is a desktop version, and the web-only version. All right? Uh, the apps are constantly being updated. I updated just a couple of days ago. And you can access your files from anywhere on any device, including a Windows machine. I mean, God forbid, I shudder when I think about <laughs> using a Windows machine. But uh, for example, Ken Goldman uses it. It's like smelling tequila. You know, I get the shakes when I do that, too. So this is uh, Lightroom. CC, user interface. Uh, I'm going to dim the lights a little bit. Maybe you'll see it better. I can't seem to get these. I don't know how to do that. That's completely dark. Is that better? How about for photography? Is that good? Whoa. I think I might have just pulled the plug on the uh, Ethernet. So this is a building. I took this a couple of days ago in Reston. It's a Comstock building. And uh, I was just shooting in the area. 
And so you have on the left hand side various albums and this, this you publish to the cloud. It's automatic in uh, Lightroom CC. And you can define albums, you can define folders, uh, just as way Ken, uh, I'm sorry, Roy talked about uh, for photos. And on the right hand side, you have some of the editing options which are kind of hidden. You'd have to click on it to see it. And here at the bottom, you have the various photos that were taken and we're just having, we're focusing on that photo right now, all right? So that's what Lightroom CC looks like. This is what the desktop version looks like. So those of you, how many of you use Lightroom? One person, two. How come you're not using Lightroom? You're missing a great experience. I know. <laughs> I'm planning to use it. Yeah, we're all trying. You have a question? Yeah, if you're shooting in RAW, you get your life back. That's true. That's true. And, you know, it's just that much more control. And why are, we, why are we here today? We're here because we know that our photos are out of control. <laughs> right? Let's face it. So we need to focus on how we can control, get, gain control of the photos because they're such an important part of our lives. Okay? If you... Yes, sir. Once you get to the high resolution stuff, you really want to use this high level uh, processing uh, programs. You'll, you'll really enjoy what you see. You'll see things you never saw before. Right. Um, you'll see things you never saw before. In fact, um, I have a new camera that I bought and it has really good lens. And you take a picture and you kind of compose it. But then when you look at it in Lightroom, you see what the lens saw. And there's so much more that you can do with the with the photo. Compared and if to the viewfinder or the LCD display. Precisely, precisely. So um, the colors are different. You have much more control over that. Um, maybe we should have a follow-up on how you edit your photos next <laughs> next month or some sometime soon. Would you like that? <coughs> oh yeah. Okay. So editing uh, is, is another topic. We're not covering today. We're just saying how to organize your photos. So this is the uh, interface. And you see there's much more control. I'll, I'll give you a demo. Uh, you've got the white balance. That's where you take advantage of camera raw. Uh, you have a tone, a contrast, a lot of things you can do in photos, but much more control here. And if you get that photography plan, you have access to Photoshop. And I've been playing around with things like digital negatives because Adobe's for when you take a raw file, it's .dng, which stands for their digital negative. And so uh, you can actually take a color photo and make it black and white. You can expose it as if it were an infrared photo. So you can do a lot. I was very impressed at one of our photo contests that some fellow won because he took an infrared shot. And I said, wow, that's great. Now I can do it too, you know? And um, you'd be surprised on Facebook, there are groups just for black and white photos. I have posted, I got a couple of likes. So uh, I made some friends on Facebook. But this is the user interface. On the left-hand side, you have, tells you all the photographs, etc. It's very hard to read here. But then you have and collections. So a collection in, photo sh in Lightroom is the same as an album in photos. So if you compare Lightroom Classic to Lightroom, the Classic is the desktop version. Uh, of the software and allows you to store your photos locally as well as in the cloud and choose which ones to synchronize with the cloud. When you do photos and what I hate about iCloud Drive is that you can't decide which folders in your iCloud Drive you want to sync with your desktop. 
So you've got everything and it takes up a lot of space. But that's one of my gripes. Uh, Lightroom only allows photos to be stored in the cloud. The classic version has much more refined editing tools including processing a photo shot in camera raw, thereby allowing you to choose how the camera would have shot the photo had it been in any of those other environments. Now that's like a what if, but sometimes that what if can make all the difference in the way you develop your photo. Yes, sir. Uh, Photos only be stored in the cloud? You can't store them on your own uh, external hard drive? Uh, it goes to the cloud. I'm not sure if if it's stored locally or not. That's something I have to... I like mine right here. Yeah. Well, cloud. well, get... The cloud is nothing but a hard drive. It's over somebody's closet. I want mine right here. And you want uh, <coughs> the Creative Cloud Classic. Oh, okay. Lightroom Creative Cloud Classic. You want that version. When you get this photography description or a pres subscription, <laughs> you can download those, you can download Photoshop to your computer, uh, the classic version of Lightroom and the um, CC version of Lightroom. So you get all of them. Okay, good. Yeah. That's so, yeah, it's worth, yeah. So you get, you get it all. So, but you want to edit, when you import photos, you want to import them in the classic, which is your desktop version. And then you have to uh, so you can also edit photos in Photoshop and versions of your photos are stored in the classic. So if I make a change in Photoshop and it remembers all the changes as well, but when I save it, it saves it as a different version of the photo. So it creates a stack. You'll see one of two where the first one is the original, the second one is the one you, you modified. So there's that integration which I think is very good as well. So organizing your photos, we have folders and collections here. Uh, so I have various folders. Some of them are smart collections, and I'll demo that as well. Uh, for example, uh, all of those that are colored red, those that I've assigned five stars to, the photos I've taken in the past month or recently modified. So it knows that. And you also have publishing services that you can set up to your hard drive, uh, to Adobe Stock, to Facebook and Flickr. I don't know if uh, there's a Twitter publishing, but you know, you might want to share a photo on Facebook or a collection of photos, and you can do that. I haven't tried it, but I haven't set it up yet. And on the right-hand side, we have the developing. So you can assign keywords, you can flag photos, you can give them a star rating from zero to five. Uh, you can sync your collections. You right click and say, I want to sync this collection to the cloud. You can share collections on the web with your friends and you can search by metadata. For example, someone talked about, well, I want to merge streams based on the cameras. In this, there's no problem. I even show you the metadata for the various cameras that took shots that I have. All right. You can also search by location, and the same way that Photos has the when you right click on Get Info, you get the map. You can there's a map in the tab, and it shows you how your photos were taken if you have GPS. iPhone, you have the location automatically. For other cameras, it's not quite as simple. Some cameras, I think there's Nikon apps where you, you link your phone with the camera and then it picks up the GPS coordinates through the Nikon app on your phone. So there are ways to, to get GPS coordinates. Yes, sir. I have a collection. You said you have folders and collections both in this Lightroom? Yes. And what would you keep in a folder as opposed to what you keep in a collection? Could they be identical or would they be different? Well, the folder helps me to organize. Like I say, photos taken associated with George Mason. So I have a GMU folder. Then I have various collections associated with that and travel folders. Like you might have a folder when you go to Florida and another folder when you go to Puerto Rico or wherever or Europe. And it's just a way of organizing things. You know, I 
I that makes sense to you. Like, you know, big picture folder. Yeah. Each, each folder is uh, organized already by what it is, what's in it. Yes. That, put it in Lightroom and just put it as a collection. Yeah. Even though it's a folder. Yeah, you could import it as a collection. Okay. And one thing uh, for those of you who um, have Aperture libraries, Photos will import Aperture libraries, as will Lightroom. So what you've done before doesn't go away. If you've kept them, you can then import them into Photos. And that's a big feature. At least they're backward compatible, which is very good. Very good. So are you ready for demos? Hey, we've got about 15 minutes. So, um, do you want to give a demo? Uh, why don't you do yours first? All right. Yeah, but so, all right. He's got so, anyway. Yeah. So let me. I'm going to bring up a chair here. <clears throat> so I brought part of my home setup. This is a nice uh, dock because I have a MacBook Pro that only has uh, USB-C connectors. So this is a dock I bought from OWC, about $300. It gives, I, I have, um, it's, got all, kinds it's got all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I can put in a camera card here. I have Ethernet, a number of ports here for USB. Uh, I've got S, whatever, some audio version here. And I also have um, a connector for um, USB-C Thunderbolt. And I have an adapter to a USB-C, a Thunderbolt 2 drive. Uh, Thunderbolt 3 would already have USB-C. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my, my buddy here. Hope everything will work. I took my Lightroom <coughs> uh, library from my iMac and I copied it to this disk. So I may have some duplicates because it was syncing like crazy uh, from the cloud. <coughs> Am I blocking the screen? No. Nope. Okay. So here is my uh, Thunderbolt drive. All right. So I, I my uh, I my I copied over about 300 gigabytes. Um, my mouse will help me here. So if we look, here's the Lightroom. Here's the Lightroom Classic, right? Uh, this is Lightroom Classic. So I have, um, this is the catalog I'm using, which is only 249 megabytes. Uh, Lightroom data here is 254 megabytes, but the, these are the previews and that's 24 megabytes. Gigabytes. Gigabytes. 24 gigabytes. So I didn't copy over 300. I copied over 25 gigabytes. All right. So what we have here is Adobe Lightroom CC. Here is the Adobe Lightroom Classic. And here is Photoshop. And here I have trusty photos. <laughs> Photos. Give me a break. Uh, it's good that we have a choice. Uh, choice is good. Choice is good. This picture here, that's supplied by um, that's supplied by Apple. That's just the screen. But so I'm I'm going to uh, launch Lightroom Classic. And here is the user interface. This is the navigator. 
So I can, I, I remember sending this to maybe Jay and Paul. This is um, my breakfast in Santa Fe. <laughs> All kinds of green chili there. <laughs> so that, that's good. So I have 18,704 photos. I have 8,300 that are synced with the cloud. I've got duplicates there I'm sure I can get rid of, but I just haven't had the patience to do it. But it's telling me how many duplicates. I have a quick collection here. Uh, this is me as Vincent van Gogh on Halloween. <laughs> Uh, this is really extemporaneous because I haven't really selected the photo. I just happened to see them. Um, previous import. So these are the photos I took in Reston in my neighborhood and the, the various buildings. Um, so I can navigate here. But let me show you. Here are the folders I have. So these are uh, pictures taken different dates. It's looking for them. They're not on this computer. That's why uh, I got pictures from my iPad Air, iPad Pro, iPhone 5S. So these are actual pictures. Are they just in one folder? Yeah. Uh, so I have various so where are my folders? <coughs> and here are the collections. So these are architectural photos. I, I organized, I have it under, uh, the folder is called Leica folders. So this is with my new camera. Leica, I bought a Leica camera. And the lens is fantastic. I mean, the camera itself. These are the colors, like. So you can have, uh, so here's where you, you can see a grid or one, or you can actually compare shots, uh, see the difference. Here I can flag a shot or unflag it. <coughs> I can assign the number of stars I want to it. And here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says as shot, it's a camera raw photo, so I can say, let me see what it would look like automatic. So that's what the camera thinks automatic. I like as shot better. This is what it would look like in daylight. That's closer, because it was daylight when I shot it. And um, this would be in shade. So it compensates based and here, let's say uh, tungsten lighting. This will blow your mind, right? But the image retains all of that information. So you can decide how to develop it. Um, so I'll just leave it as shot. Now, if I want more control, I can right click this. Well, before that, let me show you the metadata. So I said Metro Reston. Those are the keywords. And down here, it actually suggests keywords for me that I might want to add to that photo. Like Upper Lake. Pardon me? Uh, it, it knows it knows keywords I've used recently or you can have different sets like if you go to Italy you might have keywords for the cities in Italy and it, you can then bring up a preset and use that for tagging or do your own yeah or do your own but you, you can save the preset so it is your own but you bring it up because you know you're focusing on photos from a trip to Europe. You can, you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Um, these are suggestions. I can have a keyword set. See, it has recent keywords. I can do outdoor photography, portrait. These are provided by 
by Adobe. But you can have your own. You can edit a set. And so here's the keyword list. So if I want to say, okay, this is the Albuquerque Balloon Festival. So it has two photos here. And here's another uh, example of the metadata. You can ask for text. You can search here. Uh, so suppose here are the attributes like, and here's metadata. Just a couple more minutes, Larry. Okay. So um, this is what you get. So let me go back. So let, let's look at this photo. I don't know if it was done in Camera Raw or not, but let me just say I want to edit in. It doesn't allow me to edit this. Maybe it's not available. Um, So this photo here, I can edit it in. Um, this is a problem when I just copied over. If I were on my desktop, it would allow me to edit it in Photoshop, and Photoshop would come up, and it would keep track of the photo and uh, save it to the collection. So if we go back, to our presentation here. Uh, I have a side-by-side -side comparison, uh, which will, if, do we have enough time? Uh, for cloud storage, you can use iCloud for photos and for Adobe, 10 gigs up to one terabyte, depending on the plan you choose. Multiple libraries, yes, but only one system library for photos. You can have multiple catalogs, but only one will sync with Creative Cloud. Uh, in terms of metadata, keywords, tagging, rating, flagging, and maps. And we have uh, the same thing for uh, Adobe Cloud, but we can add a copyright. So you can copyright your photos when you export. You can put a copyright notice on your photo. Uh, I know that Ken Goldman, when he imports his photos, he automatically puts a copyright on it, right? And organizational tools, we have folders and albums. Here we have folders, collections, and albums. It's very easy to share an album once you've created it on Creative Cloud. I can show you that here. And uh, in terms of iOS apps for the iPhone and iPad, uh, built in for photos is photos and the camera itself. Uh, for Creative Cloud, we have a Creative Cloud app, Lightroom app, which uses the iPhone camera lens and Photoshop Express. Uh, in terms of capturing RAW, we have uh, third-party apps like ProCam and uh, the Lightroom app on the iPhone captures it in Adobe DNG format. Editing tools, we have the built-in editor and third-party apps for photos. And we have Lightroom and Photoshop to edit Camera Raw if you do it. Uh, many cameras will allow you to shoot Camera Raw and a JPEG file at the same time. And what you see is the JPEG file. The Camera Raw file you don't see on your uh, camera's LCD screen. And import tools, we have aperture libraries you can bring in, the iPhone camera roll, and storage cards. And the same thing here, uh, you can import aperture libraries, iPhone camera roll, photos library. So you could bring your photos library into Lightroom if you want, and storage cards. Can you import your iPhone into uh 
Sure. When you, when you plug your iPhone into your computer through the USB, through this, uh, if you have Lightroom Classic open or even Lightroom CC, you can import photos from your, your camera right into Lightroom. Yeah. So the conclusions we have, Photos is, quote, free because it's built into Mac OS X and iOS. But it's not really free because you have to pay for your iCloud subscription. And they keep monkeying with it. Pardon me? And they keep monkeying with it. They keep monkeying. Now, I'm just waiting for Apple to decide what is the next version of Photos. They're going to call it <laughs> Photos Plus, you know. And then we're going to have to migrate to that. Uh, I must admit that the iPhone camera app is wonderful. I use it all the time. Uh, photos and the camera are sufficient for most of us. No doubt about that. But if you want that extra measure of control, if you're obsessed about your photos, then I really encourage you to even do a free trial of Adobe Lightroom and see if you like it. Okay? When you want more control of your photos, want to, want to manipulate photos captured in camera raw, Lightroom Classic is the one for you. Uh, and if you want to work on a Windows platform, Adobe software runs on Windows. And last but not least, both iCloud and Creative Cloud are subscription services. Unfortunately, uh, we have to pay for the storage and for the software. It's not the way it used to be where you could buy a box set and uh, put it on your bookshelf and you had the CD and you install it. Much of that software will not run on newer versions of the operating systems. The Lightroom resides on the computer when you use the uh, classic. It does. Does Photoshop do that too? Does it resides right on your computer or not? Uh, it, it will edit the uh, the photo that's in right in your classic, your desktop, and it'll reside on your computer as well. Okay. When you save it from Photoshop back into the collection, it'll reside there as well. Okay. Uh, Roy, Larry, any final words? Yeah, Roy, do you have some final words? No. Um, now, continue with the, in the sink, we'll talk about this. Yeah. Now, I want Roy to tell me that he's going to go into Lightroom. <laughs> No, I'm still learning. Uh, I think that's where we'll have to leave it here today, folks. A big hand for Larry and Roy. And so we'll have some peace outside for the people who are going to stay for the Mobile Lightroom Summit.